My topic today is the overall flow of energy in the structure of your piece. We know that the form of this piece is theme and variation. It's a form made up of an initial theme and subsequent separate variations that are just played one after another. But what we haven't done as much work on is this concept of the overall form. I gave a suggestion here which might give you a bit of a clue, but I wanted to talk about it more carefully. So what we're talking about when we're composing is managing the drama or the flow of energy in the composition. And sometimes this is called managing the concept of tension and release. So this is a little table that I got from this website. This is a website I sometimes use in the film composition unit in year 10, so it's not absolutely relevant to this assignment, but the broader concept is. So basically, some things cause you to be more relaxed such as repetition, because you think, oh, I've heard that before, so it's quite calming. Then if there's too much contrast, if too many new things happen one after another, you become quite distressed. If the harmony is static, so static means not changing much. In this particular piece, the harmony is fairly set. But we did discuss that you could reharmonize or add extra passing chords in. So that would make it more busy or more dramatic or more energetic. Smooth dynamics, like I didn't make this table, but I would say softer dynamics or not as much contrast or not as many rapidly changing dynamics would make something calmer and less energetic. Whereas if you've got sudden changes of dynamics, lots of changes of dynamics, that's going to make it more energetic and more dramatic. Classical music is quite calm most of the time, so that's why I say this table is really based on film music. However, the broader concepts are still true. So this business of unchanging orchestration. So orchestration just means what instruments are playing what parts. Yeah, So you don't have a lot of choice in this particular one because you've only got two or three instruments to play with. But nonetheless, we did talk about who has the melody, who has the accompaniment, who has the bass line. So that moving around of that will, will add some interest and variety and drama, whereas if you always had the same instrument playing the melody and whatever, then it would sound calmer and less interesting and more boring. Range of pitch. So we talked about perhaps having the melody up an octave or in a lower instrument down the octave. So it's a broader concept which I'm hoping you're starting to understand. Rhythmic continuity is in this table. I'd say busier rhythmic values, so longer rhythmic values such as minims and, and crotchets would be less busy and dramatic than quicker rhythmic values like quavers and semiquavers. Or dotted rhythms or syncopation is quite busy. So you've got to think about each individual variation that you've made as an, a tiny miniature little piece on its own. Then you've also got to think about the relationship of those. So let's have a quick browse through Mozart. You'll notice that it's reasonably limited pitch range. It's on the star. It's all crotchets and there are only two parts, you know, so it doesn't give the tempo but it's a sort of moderato tempo. So I would call that reasonably unenergetic, yeah, which was of course how you would pre present the theme, simply and not particularly energetically. And then he goes to the same speed but some interesting energetic baseline pattern, but he balances that with these long ties. So overall this is only a slight change in energy. It is louder, so the energy level is going up. Now we've got some triplets and some trills, which also make it quite energetic, and you'll notice the notes in the right hand are going higher, and also there's more notes going on at any one time, usually three. And then we've got four notes at a time, don't we? We've got three note chords a lot in this right hand, and we've got more triplets, so it's gradually increasing in energy. Then we've got this sort of offbeat call and response sort of parts in, and some syncopation here, sort of offbeats, mba, 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 which gives a little bit of energy. And here's some chromatic notes. So this gives it more energy, gives a little bit of dissonance. And we've got some ticker t or ticker ta rhythms. So we're getting more rhythmic energy. So we're building the energy gradually. This is quite energetic. We've got notes that are very close together and they're quite fast. And we've got loud three note chords. So we're getting gradually, gradually, gradually through this piece, more and more energetic until here where we've got a slight slowdown in the energy but we've got this minor key and we've got some imitation and we've got some syncopation and we've got lots of chromaticism so this is reasonably energetic because it's dense and it's somewhat chromatic I would say that we're building 
Now we've gone back to something reasonably simple. Now we've gotten back to some energetic. Then we've got some dotted notes and all sorts of things happening. But this is very, very slow. So we've sort of got calmed down again, haven't we? And then we've got this big, fast, loud finale with lots of trills. So broadly speaking, the energy of this whole piece, I would say, builds gradually towards about the two-thirds way, has a little sort of resting bit, gets a bit energetic again, and then comes down to its sort of least energetic point, and comes down to its least energetic point at variation 11 and then finishes with a big finale. So here's an interesting graph which attempts to show the relationship between the passing of time in throughout the form of a song and the tension level. And I would agree with this for popular song or for most songs that the climax of the emotional and dramatic tension happens somewhere around the sort of three quarter mark and then it tends to fall away. This is a graph from a drama website to show perhaps the level of tension throughout the form of a dramatic presentation. So you set up, so for us that would be like the theme or the introduction, then you have some confrontation, so this is where you have some variety and contrast, but gradually the overall energy is increasing, but it does have dips, and then there's the big climax, which is sort of the resolution of the whole form, and in this it sometimes includes this denouement where the energy goes down at the end. But I would suggest from the point of view of the theme and variations that the piece actually should finish at the climax here. So here's my final picture to try and explain this. This is for also from a pop song, but it gives you the, the same concept, doesn't it? As time goes through the form, you want gradually increasing energy until, in the theme and variations, I would say that you reach this sort of end point where it's the climax and you have a big finish. That's the typical classical approach to this sort of flow of energy throughout the piece. But you'll notice it's not a straight line and particularly you'll notice this business here, yeah, which also happened in the Mozart structure. There was a point before the final climactic variation where it was actually the slowest and least energetic variation, almost like the calm before the final storm. And there were some dips in energy. You don't sort of gradually get more and more energetic like steps. You get a bit more energetic and then perhaps a tiny bit less and then a bit more and then a tiny bit less, a bit more and then perhaps much less and then you finish with the big finish. So this is the sort of thing that you really need to consider in your final arrangement 